Hey there, Fak here. I have a lot of beginners ask me how to forge a pair of tongs. So today's video is about forging a pair of tongs for beginners. And we're gonna be doing a pair of box jaw tongs. That's uh, box jaw are tongs that are grip for gripping flat stock and they've got little ears on the side. The idea being that uh, you grab the stock like that and it keeps it from pulling out. If you try to use flat tongs on something like that, it's forever jumping out of there. This holds it nice and securely. These are also called blade tongs uh, because they're used for making blades. That just happens to be the appropriate shape. So let's get started. So I put about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter in on the inside edge there, and then hitting with the hammer half on, half off. It's very important. That technique, the half on pushes down and compresses and forges the steel. The half off part pushes the steel down and keeps it in position. If you try to do that with it fully on, you're gonna distort it. It's much harder to control the shape. So it's a technique that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense at first, but once you get onto it, you really understand it's the best way to control the shape. Now, as a beginner blacksmith, I recommend that you learn to make tongs very early on. It's something that's gonna be very useful to you. You can never have enough pair of tongs and it is a very valuable skill to learn. Um, this teaches you a lot about forging, a lot about spatial skills, proportions, and things like that. So it's really something that you should learn how to do. It's gonna empower you for a lot of things as you get into your blacksmithing career. So notch number two, I, I start on the inside edge of the anvil, notch number one. Notch number two is a quarter turn counterclockwise to the outside edge. And then right where that junction is, I'm hitting with a hammer half on, half off. And I want to have the hammer face parallel to the anvil here. Very important. So I want to bring this notch down to about 5 16 thick as well, about half the distance. So bringing it down to 5 16 there, and let me just straighten things up. So you want it to spread as wide as it can. Let it spread as wide as it can that way, and about 5 16 thick that way. That is notch number two. Okay, notch number three. We started here notch number one. Notch number two is a quarter turn counterclockwise. Notch number three is another quarter turn counterclockwise. And I am now about three quarter of an inch from the first and second notch. And I'm going in to make my third notch. I want to come about half the width of this area here. One of the cool things about being a blacksmith to me is that you make your own tools and that to me is just one of the attractions about it. Uh, being able to make custom tools that you did yourself, there's, you know, it's really quite an empowering feeling to be able to do that and I think it's just part of the whole blacksmithing world. Okay, so that is the third notch. So you can see now this basically has a step. Um, is the way that this moves here. Look at it from the other side. So it's flat all along this side here. And then in this direction here, it steps off. So that is essentially it. We have the area there, which is going to be the pivot point. Now I'm gonna draw out the reins. Now I could do that by hand, but I'm sweating like crazy already. And I've got a power hammer right there. So I'm just gonna go draw it out. If you're a beginner, um, you're gonna have to draw those out by hand. And then, well, well like I said it before, it sucks to be you. We did a how-to video on making tongs, how to forge a pair of tongs for beginners about six months ago, but our production qualities have uh, improved exponentially since then. So we're trying to redo it so we can capture things a little bit better and um, give you a little 
more clear of a picture of what is actually going on here. So uh, please comment below and let us know if you're if this is making sense to you. If anything doesn't, we can certainly answer any questions you might have. So I'm going to start drying out uh, the reins on the power hammer. All right, so I'm gonna cut a notch in my tongs here to create the ears for this pair of tongs. I've just dragged in the little bandsaw in order to do this because my cameraman is too lazy to move the actual camera to the other room, so I moved this in. It's his birthday, so happy birthday, Eric. There you go. Um, so I'm just gonna draw a line on here and come back about inch and a quarter, maybe, yeah, about an inch and a quarter. That should give me enough material to wrap up around for the ears. I think I'll probably make these for um, holding one inch stocks. So it'll be a little bigger than that. Anyway, here we go. I'm turning on the saw. I'm gonna actually wear safety glasses. Using the cutoff hardy, I'm going to open up that saw mark, the split that I put in there, and just create a T. Remove the cutoff hardy. Never work with your cutoff hardy in place. You could conceivably cut your fingers off. Uh, just an easy thing to remove there and make things much safer for you. So now I'm just tapping these down until I've got a T, like so. And now we're gonna wrap them up around. And I typically make little die blocks that I can do, that I shove them in and then I can do it very quickly. But as a beginner, I'm gonna show you how to do this in the vise, which is a little bit fiddly, but it's, you know, you can do it with a vise. I'm coming out in the vise here about five eighths from the center line. And I'm just kind of guessing approximately. And then I will bend my first ear up like that. And then for the second one, I'm just gonna try to balance out at the same on the other side. And a little offset there. Um, you get the idea though, I, you, that's why using my jig block, I can do it much cleaner that way. Anyway, you get the idea of what these tongs will look like. The top portion of the tongs here, I'm just gonna shape them. Typically, I do a bend and a bend. And then tap it back. These forks are a little bit wide for what I'm trying to do here. Trying to create a little bulge in there so that when you grab it, sometimes you're working with pieces that have a little piece on the end there, and this gives you a little clearance. Um, comes in very handy in, in situations where you'd never expect it. So I tend to make my um, box saw tongs with this little bulge in there. Just makes it more versatile. I've drilled holes in here. I did 5 16 hole because I have a 5 16 uh, button head rivet, inch and a quarter long, which tends to be a, the, the right length for this. Um, and now, just put my rivet 
in place there and you can see how that's going to go together. I've got my top and bottom set here so I'm going to heat up the rivet now and shut the rivet. When steel heats up, when anything heats up, it expands. So I've got these two hot pieces expanding against each other. So when I move them hot, they're soft and they're pushing against each other, I can burnish off the high spots that we have here. So by moving it back and forth, I'm burnishing that and then if I quench for a second, keep it moving. I can then, by the time I finish this and it's cold, I should have a nice tight joint, but still one that will move freely, but not a whole lot of wiggling. So there we go. The tongs stay like that there and then just open up. So that is a really great joint. If I wiggle that, there's hardly any slop in there. So that's a good sturdy pair of tongs and we'll hold our piece of flat bar quite nicely. And there we have it. Please subscribe, back out, see ya.